welcome to Grand Wits. Alluvian Wits. The prologue demo. According to many posters, this game is similar to something called Spirit Bearer, which, like everything else, is something I've never heard of as I do live under a rock. My lighthouse is a mess. This unhinged weather and the constant catastrophes keep destroying whatever we manage to build. What a life. In any case, there's nothing else for it. We must rebuild. Oh, I'm too old for this. I'll wait for the next caravan. Let me know if I can help in the meantime. These do not go far. The lighthouse tower is a safe place. There is much to do to ensure our survival. This right here is your little time bar. The red part of the dial here indicates where you are at. This is the morning part, caravan phase. Travelers arrive and depart. The next phase will be task assignments. We should start by clearing out the debris. We'll need to recycle this wood. I can take care of it, just let me know where to go. So the, the gameplay focuses on your task phase. We'll select Elmer and many of our options are currently deactivated. So the only one here is clear. It's not a clean button, it's a clear button. Meaning that you'll basically destroy whatever building that you click on. This building already is defeated by conditions. You can have that happen in the game. So we'll go ahead and just clear this up to get 10 wood back. I'll remove the debris. I should be done by this afternoon. Every activity is exhausting and lowers my morale. Whatever reaches zero, I will have to rest and I won't be able to help anymore. I see there is a greenhouse still standing. If you assign me to it, I'll forage for food there. Good idea. Using resources is Survival 101. These are your resources up here. Many of these I've never been able to access. It's probably not a demo or just too far advanced. Like textiles. Well, in this case, our food are vegetables, fish, and insects. Let's go and select her to work. Again, this would have been where the buttons for things like clean are. I'm just explaining because... Uh, things that might give you a hiccup when you first start playing, you're trying to understand how the phases or, or activities work. You can see exactly how we would produce things. The greenhouse itself produces 15 fruit when you assign a worker there. However, because this is a squirrel, she'll get plus five more. And because she is satisfied in her morale, she'll get plus two more for a total of 22 vegetables a day. I'll probably be done by the end of the morning. Reduction of resources is dependent on many factors. Morale, traveler species, weather. It is your responsibility as the keeper to make sure that task get assigned efficiently. It is your home, after all. It seems everyone is busy. Time to move on to the next phase of the day. And your standard camera controls. I think the game would definitely need benefit from having its own mouse cursor. Okay, so here, remember that we are in the task assignment phase. So next was just by clicking this, we get resources, and then it'll skip to the meal phase after that. Oh, and here is today's weather. We will lose one point of fire, which will be explained in a minute, and everybody will lose one point of morale because it's cloudy. All right, so let's get our resources. And then immediately jumps to the dusk phase where we eat. After work, it's time to rest. There's nothing better than a good binge to improve everyone's morale. The fuller the pot, the better we'll feel afterwards. Keep an eye on food reserves, however, it's always better to have some extra food saved up. 
varied meal will give us different bonuses. Remember to mix up your ingredients and quantities. What is better with big folks like you around? Your generosity deserves a feast. You may fill the pot with various edible resources you have in store. Traveler morale will be affected by the amount of resources in the meal. The recipe and its effect will change depending on the ingredients you use. This indicates how many days until they leave. They will leave earlier if they are if their request is satisfied. And again, we'll talk about requests in a minute. If we have no no food in it, let's go and start putting some food into it. This is the recipe. We have not yet unlocked it, but it tells us what we would get. Up here it tells us how much of the food is being given. And the more people you have, the more food will be needed to hit each tier. Right now, if we have one uh, the tier one frugal meal, tier two copious meal, and tier three a feast. You can see the effects that the feast will have on their morale. This being standard, this being happy, but not ecstatic. The recipe that we just created was wood production plus five. This is just only if I use salad or vegetables by itself. Okay, and then you can take a look around if you wanted to, but I, I really feel that some of these faces could be ironed out to be more smooth. Just how it goes directly from afternoon to dusk phase but all right uh, there are chances for events to happen maybe just have those plugged in right away uh, automatically this is the nighttime phase this fire is the key to our survival if i let it go out travelers will not see the lighthouse i will become isolated from the rest of the world each day the weather will have varying degrees of impact on the flame you can maintain the fire by giving it sources of fuel However, the items used for fuel are also materials required to build and reinforce the village. The future probably holds some difficult choices for us. For now, however, we have enough wood to keep the fire going as strong as it can. You may feed the fire with the items you have in storage to can use to fuel. The weather lowers the fire's strength. If the fire goes out, you lose. The stronger the fire, the faster the next exiles will find the lighthouse. Okay, so this is the exile progress bar. The higher your fire, the faster they get there. So we're going to keep the fire maxed. This, These are the notches that you can think of your fire's hit point bars. Remember that I said that the weather is going to reduce the fire by one, so this is one notch. By clicking this once, we can repair that. As far as I know, the fire doesn't go out any faster for being full strength. So if you spend one today or one tomorrow, it's still the same one. Meaning... Even whether if I was like down here and I lost one point of fire, it would still be this much. It wouldn't rekindle any faster. So although he talks about saving wood, I don't know why they would consider it saving wood. Maybe that's a part of the mechanics I don't yet understand. It won't go out anytime soon. Travelers will see it from far away. Another thing is that sometimes there'll be weather that will reduce fire by quite a bit, such as minus two, minus three and so forth. As far as I know, I, I gave this a couple tests. When the fire hits zero, you do not lose. But you will lose if the fire hits zero and you don't do anything about it. And you end that fire giving phase. So you could, if you know that the next few days are super windy or super rainy and you don't really want to contribute 30 wood a day to it. Yeah, you could let it hit zero until the, the weather banks out. Just throw it in 10 wood to keep it at hit points at one. the progress of the caravan it's heading to us I, I i think i mean i get that the the lighthouse is on the left side so i think the way they should do this bar is they should flip it around because the, the i think the lighthouse should be on this side and the caravan should be on this side because when the caravan does arrive it arrives from this side of the screen again these are just little small details all right so here are our residents it's a big scroll bar so you could have six eight residents and you're gonna have to scroll through them all if you wanted to check them out we have two days before the end of the request this dude wants a cabin built and this chick wants a wants to work alongside somebody our next travelers are still a few days away so no arrivals today let's tackle morning tasks yeah so that was our checkup for the caravan phase so we go back to task assignments If I may make a suggestion, you do not have the means of wood production. They can take care of that if you'd like. 
Good idea. I have the ability to build a woodcutter's cabin. We travelers are looking for places to take refuge in during our journey. We come with requests. If you fulfill them, they can only benefit the lighthouse and those that come to it. Let's build a woodcutter's cabin. Construction, so this is what he's going to do for this phase, which is build this woodcutter's cabin for 10 wood. The only thing that I know so far is that a hurricane or the natural disaster can currently damage things on the lowest ground. We're just going to go ahead and plop this right here for now. Got it! Each traveler has a request and a set time to fulfill it. Click on the icon in the character sheet to see details. Successful requests earn you victory points. They are shown up here. When you reach the objective, you win the game. A traveler who's fulfilled their request or no longer has any time left to do so will leave the lighthouse with the next exile caravan. We should keep building up our food supply. Very well. I will wait for an assignment. There's nothing like a good meal after a hard day's work. While there's stuff animated here, nothing actually happens until you hit end phase. And during the non store part, I can actually cancel everything. I could even cancel construction of this and get all my resources back. Nothing is committed uh, outside of the tutorial. Nothing is committed until you've hit this green button. Elmer, a photo request. It's time for me to go back on the road. I shall be on the next convoy out of here. I'll check on you if I'm ever around here again. Thanks for your help. You're always welcome. Have a nice trip. Morale. This traveler has no strength left and will automatically rest during the next work phase. This traveler is exhausted. A good meal might perk them up. This traveler is in good shape. A good meal will make them feel great. This traveler is satisfied, which improves their resource production. This traveler is happy, which greatly improves their resource production. The exile's morale impacts the work. So he's leaving on the next caravan, which is showing up in the next day. But what you could do if the game would permit you is don't feed anybody. But, you know, this is the tutorial and we want to be nice. So let's go ahead and give them another feast. You can see that it's still going to be a green salad, no matter how much, no matter how many veggies, veggies they put in. Fire can already be seen from far enough away, and the next convoy will be here tomorrow. It is sometimes smart to save resources. So the, this is where I, where I mentioned earlier that the game talks about saving resources. I could put in 10 and hit, try to hit confirm, but then he says, No need to waste wood tonight. The thing is, is I still would have to put in 10 the next day. We're, we're, we'll go, the game's going to force me to, to take this hit point loss or whatever you want to call it. Fine, fine. So we're one notch below full. That's from tonight's foggy. When we go to the next day, it's gonna we're gonna need to have 30 wood available to max it out. It's not that I ended up saving any wood. A convoy just arrived, as planned. Travelers looking for a rest, a refuge, or a meal will stay here for a few days. Let's welcome them as best as we can. With Elmer leaving, we have two available spaces. Who are the new visitors? So at this point, um, normally, again, when not in the tutorial, it would have a bunch of random people, maybe about five uh, possible citizens for you to pick. In the beginning of the game, we have housing for three. One is leaving, dropping us down to one. That means that we have space for two more to max out at three. Let's see how we may help each other. Let's move on to the morning. Hello, 
everyone. I cannot work in any of your workshops. Don't you have some bears around? We don't. What is your specialty? We bears are experts in producing insects. Let me show you. Worm terrarium. Don't really know. Of, like I don't have uh, the meta of of <laughs> of game assignment locations down, but we'll just slap that up there for now. Workshops are not the only difference. We also have specific bonuses tied to our species. We beavers are experts in wood production, and I see you've already built a woodcutter's cabin. And we squirrels can produce more vegetables than anyone. I see. So I must account for each of your characteristics to optimize what you can accomplish. All right, now I get to pick two of their actions, but that's the limit of my freedom in this tutorial. We have to assign her to veggies, and we have to assign our beaver to the woodcutter cabin. The world of Diluvian Winds is home to many different animal species. Their respective knowledge gives them the ability to build different types of rooms. Each species has a specific feature. A species feature. A, a specific feature. Now that's really awful. They also specialize in the production of certain resources over others. We can see here that a, a squirrel gets extra veggies but loses the fish. A beaver gets extra wood but loses veggies. The recipes you discover and their effects are documented in the recipe book. The only recipe we currently have is the green salad, but as we start getting insects, we can start changing up what we're making. Here's their morale, and we can see that if we decided to do a copious meal, we could actually get Evelyn up and Bianca up. At this point, the game is actually going to let me not give them a feast, but we will go ahead and get the extra resource production. I have to feed them anyway. Well, no, you don't actually have to feed them. You can give them zero. But I want to go ahead and invest in them to get more resources. Okay, so earlier I talked about how we lost the 10 hit points already, or 10, you know, the wood. And then the next day would cost us 20, so if I wanted to max it out, I'd have to put in 30. Do you have to max it out? No, you don't. But, I mean, you might as well. I, I would say you might as well go whole hog or, or zero. And like just loiter around zero, especially if you want to save wood to to get a jump start on your economy. The speed of which the caravan arrives, which is dependent on fire, also is the speed at which you will lose travelers. Although this person will leave after two days, they only leave once the caravan has arrived. They will also leave as soon as they have completed their request. But again, that caveat is once the caravan has arrived. If the caravan takes four days to arrive to you. Doesn't matter how what this number is, they're gonna be with you. <laughs> they're gonna they're they will be your indentured servants. Random event. Oh, not in the tutorial. Hey, I'm building something. What would be the most useful for the community? And you can decide whether you want 25 wood or 15 vegetables in this, or 25 vegetables and 15 wood for this. There are many different types of random events, such as birthdays and whatnot. I do feel that when the game e Again, this is just my input. Whenever a game asks you to make a decision about factors in the game, they should give you the option to review your details pertinent to that decision. What I mean is, I know how much wood I have. I have no wood left. I know how many vegetables I have. I have no veggies left. Because I, I, you know, I, I went ahead and gave everybody everything. So I would have to think like, hmm. Do I want more veggies or do I want more wood? I, I happen to remember how many resources I have, but when you're going through the game uh, at a day a minute rather than a slow, methodical me explaining everything to you pace, when you're going through the game blazing, you might not remember that, oh, I have, I actually have a lot of metal, or oh, I maxed on wood. We're going to go ahead and go for veggies. Now we are up 25 veggies to 29, and we're up 15 wood to 17. I like insects. I will breed them. And I'm looking for traveling buddies. I would love it if you sent me to work with another traveler.
So, the only thing that I have for position of two is this woodcutter's cabin. You can see that there's two pictures here. And we're going to go in. All the game's going to force us. We're going to go in. But the game has problems registering if the, this building's on the far right. I think it's because it's next to the dial. But yeah. So now these two, there's two people in the same building, and she's going to get her request fulfilled. Bianca wants insects for dinner, so as long as we put that in the pot tonight, her request will be fulfilled. And as long as we manage to build a housing before four nights are up, which the Zoro is probably going to force us to do, Charlie's request will be fulfilled. Once you hit 25, the demo ends. I don't know if you can just keep surfing below victory points and and intentionally failing requests to keep playing the game infinitely. I, I only just sort of ran through the game once to see if this was something that I should cover. Let's add insects to the menu. Each dish has its own effect, so make sure to try out different ingredients and quantities to discover them all. Right, so we're at least one pack of insects and one veggies. So 50-50 on vegetables and insects will make this creation here. That's fine. That creation happens to give me wood and oil production. I've never encountered oil. There are things that might be limited either from my inexperience or because it's a demo. Some weather effects will reduce the fire more than others. Careful with the wind. So you'll note that if I don't put in at least 20 wood, the hour slightly above half hit point fire would not get us our caravan. And I could keep the, the person who got to work with someone an extra day. Which might be something you consider, because considering there, I think they're probably ecstatic from all the feasts I had been giving. But we'll go ahead and max out our fire, because that's the way I like it. Again, in future run-throughs, perhaps I would intentionally keep my fire down just, just above minimum life. So I can construct buildings as fast as possible. Instead of losing, say, 20, 30 wood a night, that's that's a whole building. Right? That that That's a whole construction project right there. The two people who were satisfied, that's the bear for building the worm terrarium, and that's the second score we had in the game, Evelyn, for working with someone, they're already leaving. Even though they had days left on their counter, it doesn't matter, they are happy, so they get to go. Now we get to pick two of the travelers, and if we wanted to, we can hit replace to to tag out anybody and see, who, who, um, see a random extra person. I like having beavers around because they give me extra wood production. None of these are beavers. I don't see the point currently for mice because I don't yet know anything about textiles. So we're just going to go ahead and replace this one. She does have a nice number of days she would work with us. Her victory points are only worth one. Remember that you can only pick two of these, but I like to sort of pick the ones I'm least likely to use. That way, when I look at my full hand, essentially I can decide what to pick from there. So we're going to pick this mouse because I barely ever use mice. All right. I'd only have this person for three days, but they do produce better wood, and yeah, since I'm going to be making them make wood, that's an easy victory point right there. Beavers are good for fishing, but I have never really constructed a fishing outpost either. That's something maybe we'll try uh, this time around. I have five days to try doing that. We'll think about Omar. Let's let's try replacing Kara and see, because Kara wants fish for dinner, and these two would go hand in hand, but this person lasts an extra day. All right, that's a mouse. Building a storeroom, that's actually a pretty good thing to position myself in. kind of like that. All right, let's replace it. So that's why. That's why I, I picked the least valuable. I decided I'd jump ship from Omar to Milan. Ben is a, is a bear, which gives me extra insects. I think that when they have a produ production request, they have to be the one producing it. So I would have to have the bear not to use their insect ability. Let's go ahead and swap out Omar. We have veggies, though I'm out of rerolls. So if I, this is my own other choice, I can have a squirrel who produce veggies. So my question is, do I want to get more food or do I want for the long term? Since this is the first phase outside the tutorial where I get a little bit of freedom, We'll go for the food first. 
I'm still in the tutorial until Charlie's gone. I think I'm still in the tutorial. I think the tutorial finishes its job with you around day nine or so, but I do still have a tutorial person in the form of the beaver. We should improve the lighthouse housing capacity. I could build some housing with the appropriate amount of wood. It's also an interesting head. I don't, is that like a, a fish tank, fish bowl? One day a visitor installed a very ingenious system on the site of my lighthouse. If there is nothing else to do, you could always gather drifting debris. Who knows what you could find? The game gives me a choice of which of these two I would like to send in. Since I'm going to want veggies at this time, I really do. I don't know. See, for me, as the, my my choice is, do I want to have Edwin or Cleo waste their time fishing? Uh, we're gonna have. I'm gonna assume that it's always going to be wood, but maybe not. Fish. This, this is not the fishing thing where where I would satisfy my request to have fish for food. I think this just gives you random loot. So I'm going to have the beaver get this. But on my trial run, that automatically gave me wood. That may have just been a, a random thing. So I, I'm, I'm fairly sure that this would just randomly give you anything. But that was part of the tutorial request inside this crane room and is now fishing. This gives this frees up Edwin to do this. Now that being said, I could try constructing if I had wood left, if I didn't totally force feed the fire. But we're going to go for veggies. All right, so this time when they fish, they got 10 insects. So I'm not going to be able to feed the fire tonight. If the game will let me, I will try to have, try to utilize my wood production. So we're going to go for the vegetable and insect bento. And of course, unfortunately, unfortunately, I have nothing I can do with the fire. I don't have enough wood for that. But that doesn't appear to penalize my caravan. It's still going to go half the distance for me. And as if the fire gets lower, the caravan will reach you at a much slower pace. Weather forecast isn't good. There will be a storm in the next three days, which may cause dangerous waves that will come crashing against the lighthouse. Waves can vary in size, but the rooms closest to the ground are always the most vulnerable. We must reinforce our rooms if we want to avoid losing them. It costs resources, but it's still better than going back to square one. Now that's going to require that I reinforce. Ah, uh, that's late. Okay, so we're going to have... What's your request? Produce 30 veggies. Request is produce 30 wood. So we're going to have Edwin reinforce this housing unit. Good. This room now has an extra health point. It should survive the next catastrophe. All right. Good. As this is a tutorial, I don't actually get an undo button for Edwin. But since I did spare Charlie and Cleo, we're now going to mass produce this wood. I need my first real choice I get to make. Well, second choice. Here's the third day forecast. So this is your one and only warning, essentially, that the game is giving you during the tutorial to protect yourself. There have been people in the Steam forums that were very unhappy with the results of the hurricane destroying their buildings. I'm assuming that when you're over cap on the next day, you go back to cap, but we'll be feeding that fire. So we're going to be under cap anyways. We didn't spend any any of today producing food, so we only have one more day's worth of rations if we do it like this again, but I need that wood in order to reinforce our buildings. But someone's birthday. All right, so we need to look. So we have Charlie, who's already max happy. Cleo and Edwin are okay. Cleo and Edwin will leave in two days, so that's realistically three days because the caravan is going to show up the next day over and then two days after that. When I produce 30 wood 
or when I produce that many veggies. I'm probably going to satisfy Edwin's request because we're going to reinforce the wood, wood choppers hut. So it, it, depending on whose birthday it is, is depending on, on whether or not we chop wood or harvest veggies. So Cleo or Edwin. Leo the beaver, Edwin the squirrel. Why do I talk about all this? Because the game tells me nothing about this. So it's Cleo, and that was the beaver. So do I want to give up food to raise that person's morale? We'll go ahead and do so. We will go ahead and say, yeah, we'll, we'll give up 10 insects. And is that everything we want to do? Yeah. All right, so for this next day, we are going to go, go go wood crazy again. We still have another night to reinforce the wood wood chopper's let, cabin, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and throw all the wood in, and we'll be we'll be in in the next day. So yeah, that's why I talked so much about that birthday stuff because if and, and if you don't look at it before you have to have to make your decision, you can't look at it at all. We're gonna lose Charlie, but we will have Cleo. Here's another Cleo. <laughs> Might be the same one. We, we, we do want some food. I mean, I haven't tried this fisher fisherman stuff. I guess I could. And he does make let me build a storeroom, which might come in handy. Uh, I don't know. We're about to deal with the storm. I don't know if I have the wood spare for that. I'll take this Cleo. As opposed to this Cleo. Alright, so we have another beaver coming in and another squirrel coming in. This is the birthday Cleo. All right, so this is the one with who's extra happy because of the birthday party, which isn't displayed in here, just satisfied. We'll go and have you produce wood. You want to work with a traveler and you want to produce more veggies. All right, so that's some of the minimum that was taken care of. I could I could do more veggies there, or I could start working on like another construction. So what we will do is how much would it actually take to upgrade that? I probably can't do that. Okay, so I want to see how much we do to upgrade the building. How much wood we would need? We would need ten wood. Um, and we're assuming we're at max fire. I mean, the game doesn't really do a good job showing me what my fire hit hit, hit points are. You have to zoom in and all this stuff. Given how important that's supposed to be, you should really be able to see that somewhere. But okay. Anyways, also this clock is, I, I, it'd be nice if it was reflective of your sundial as well, or whatever this is. All right, so we're going to use up 10 wood tonight for the fire. No, 20 wood tonight for the fire, 10 wood for this, so that's 30 wood. So I have enough. If I, I have enough right now if I do nothing with it. What we're going to do is, let's go ahead and double work this, and we won't harvest any wood tomorrow. All right. I mean, that's a very simplistic choice, but I wanted to really think about it to make sure that I wasn't falling into any traps, making false assumptions. So I throw, I basically put in both my squirrels into veggies and both my beavers into the wood shop, which is totally a logical, easy thing to do. I get it. But I wanted to make sure I counted all my wood usage. In this case, I'm going to lose wood, but this will free up the wood cabin for tomorrow because we can't, we won't be able to use it. And I'll also get to learn what actually happens.
All right, so we take a heavy penalty of that. We're gonna go ahead and slap in 20, and this is going to leave us with 71 out of 50. I'm assuming the extra 21 is gone. And that's why I had to think about it. Like, did I want to assign the beaver to chop the wood, or did I want to assign the beaver to fishing? Or random loot, which could just be wood as well. It's just a, probably a lower quantity of it. I assume you get 10 of anything that you land on. Yeah, so I did lose the remaining 21 wood. That's okay. Elmer and Cleo do not agree on their proper way to work. They're asking for a third opinion. We're going to do veg veggies production. It would be nice if this was actually given some storyline uh, context rather than, hey, what production do you want? That way, if the player says, oh, you know what? Life is sacred, both for insects and animals. We just eat them to survive or whatever. Like, give an actual emotional context to this question. But because we are maxed on wood and we're not going to be working on wood tonight, Cleo wins this argument. More effective indeed. All right. The storm rages. This is our last chance to reinforce our weakest rooms. Let's build housing. And you, you're you already satisfied, so we're going to have you reinforce. And the two stars here indicates that this is a two-star house. But as far as I know, that only determines how many hit points it has. Now these guys, they won their little argument. So veggies it is. For my final choice, I could either go fishing, which I don't really want to do. Maybe, maybe it's very valuable. I just haven't really put much into it. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to build housing to increase the, the person we get in the next cabin. If we put it on the floor, I'm going to assume that it's going to get wrecked by that hurricane. So we're going to put it on this floor. Yeah, the game's not going to let me put it up here. I've heard that you can actually start start building construction projects and then cancel the lower floor ones. And that's cool, too. But we're not going to worry about that right now. While he talks about the ground level, I'm not sure if houses in the middle will get destroyed, but this is a good way to find out. We've ended up using almost all of our wood just for today's projects. I do know it was a waste to get that extra 20 wood wood. I totally recognize that. But I was taking the hurricanes seriously. We still don't have any insects, so I still can't get a wood buffet going on. Veggies it is for everyone. If I remember correctly, the caravan is coming in in the very next day. So we won't necessarily give people super food because everybody's leaving. In fact... If the caravan's coming up, I'm, I've never done no meal before. I wish I could see if the caravan's actually showing up the next day. I, I forget. I assume it is. I assume I've already had one day with these guys, and this is the second, second day I've had with them. So, yeah, but if I, if my fire is bringing in people every two days, it should be coming in on the next night. So, no food for you guys. You guys are leaving goat forage. And now I'm completely out of wood. I think you have all the knowledge you need. Good luck. If I had fed them, sure, I might get certain bonuses to their next day's production. I might increase their morale for their next day's production. But they're all leaving. Every single one of them. I've fulfilled all their objectives. That house totally went bye-bye. Well, it's regrettable for the house. This is okay because I have tried running a very large community and I, I, I had to have so many people work on food. All right, we have no people left. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Squirrel, squirrel. Bear. Not happy with any of you guys. All right, let's pick the least likely one. 
try making someone happy. I also need to work on food at that time. I could make a garden. That'll help make happiness. I got two more choices. Alright, unfortunately I don't have a single beaver here. So I'm not going to be able to do repairs on all everything that just got blown up. I will need at least someone chopping wood. So even though this is not a beaver, we're, we'll go with this one. So he will be our woodcutter. I don't know if it's a random possibility that buildings in the middle get damaged. Because in my first run at the tutorial, I had a building in the middle not get damaged. The wonders of technology. World's travelers have been surviving climate change for a while now. They've learned a lot of new things and create new buildings. It seems we found the means to consume resources to create others in a sustainable way. New travelers will be able to capitalize on this knowledge. Amazing, we can't wait to see it. New species tier unlocked. If you lack time or want to experience the game at a faster pace, you can tick the auto skip box above the wheel. Once the tasks of the day are finished, the game will automatically move on to the next day. We are totally clicking that box. We are now completely out of the tutorial. We can do whatever we want. I'm sad about that, but uh, it's, there's not much we can do. Now, I, I'm kind of curious about something, so we're going to do another test. I'm wondering if produce wood will count for that clearing, and I'll, sh I'll talk about that in a minute. So we need enough wood to produce a garden. You need to be happy. You want to build a garden. And you want to be happy, right? Okay. Uh, we're going to end up needing some food. So let's assign this squirrel there. We're going to want some insects before we do any massive wood cutting projects. Okay, I'm just going to explain. I'm, I am testing stuff. Under normal circumstances, I have to have this mouse clear the rubble here for 10 wood. I'm just curious. I want to see if my production is counted or this request if I clear it. All right, and you can now, I don't know, we'll chop wood with you. All right. And I want to get these guys real happy as possible, so we're gonna just feed them everything we've got. I, I was kind of sure that it was a wood production one. Now, since I don't care about this caravan, nothing's going to change if it arrives. I still want the fire at full strength. You guys had a feast. Why are you unsatisfied? Oh, because of the fogginess. That's why. I oh, that's going to suck. Okay, that did not count for my wood production. So he's going to have to do that. We're still going to need food in order to have the feast rolling. That leaves you chopping wood. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you give me a feast and it's foggy, I will be happy with you. OK, I'm not going to be as self-centered as these guys. Yeesh, that's everything I've got. I'll save one of each just in case. I don't know. It, although it doesn't show an actual change, I'm sure that it's, there's fractional values here. We'll just go ahead and go whole hog into it. Now, let me think. Do I want to... We're going to skip on the wood tonight. I'm going to go ahead and use whatever I've got to construct stuff now.
I've never had it where the caravan had nothing to do. Oh, I won't skip it, just to see if there's any... <laughs> okay. I don't think you can kick anybody out, so... Bye! Got two nights to get everybody up and running for happiness. They wanted a garden. I'm not 100% sure if this person has to be the one to build a garden. Here. So we're going to have Maisie do it. Again, I'm just trying to find out stuff. Needs the food. You need some more wood production. Right, let's see if that request. Okay, so he got his wood production. I don't think that counted for my garden completion. I think he has to be, be the one to build the garden. I don't like making these suboptimal choices, but it's something I learned when I was studying how to master StarCraft was deliberately picking suboptimal choices expands your knowledge or scope of the game. Going to build orders all the time, picking what looks like the most efficient thing doesn't actually improve your, your processing ability for the game. It just improves your ability to do those exact rehearsed strategies. So unfortunately, we have to build a second garden if we have the resources for it, which we do not. You need to be happy today, so you're going to rest. You need some more wood to make a garden. You need to be happy today. You're also going to rest. We need you to do that because we're maxed on. Oh, no, we need veggies. You can't rest because the garden is full, right? It won't let me. Okay. We'll go and chop wood. If I'm going to build a garden, I'm going. Ah, that sucks. It really sucks that does not count. I really think the game should count that because buildings are not what I would consider uh, solo projects, but okay. All right, we'll go ahead and just do the, the insects. Okay, I'm try gonna try to keep keep let's see here the bear. I think the game's gonna let me see what the bear needs. The bear needs the garden, so it actually doesn't matter what I feed them right now. But I, it doesn't say I fulfilled the request yet, so I gotta keep these guys ecstatic. Uh, you're you're already done. Oh yeah, you were the wood production person. So we'll do twenty insects. All right, so we're going to not have a caravan ready to roll for the first time. I find insects tend to proliferate at night in wood. I could try catching some. I'll lose morale, but I'll get 10 insects. Uh, sure, let's do it. It's a little sad. I in the in a way to me, I see that as a lost day. I've essentially made two to three issues in the game so far, such as losing the house or building the garden with the wrong person. That's fine. We'll be okay. I still feel bad about it though. Resilience. Travelers have been fighting to survive for a long time and have learned to optimize their knowledge. Each species seems to have mastered a new, a specific new building. New travelers should be able to give you more information.
Okay. You know what? It's his own fault. Anyways, we built the garden. It's just not good enough for him. Alright, alright. Let's not go in a downhood, downward death spiral here like War Fortress stuff. Made some, I made some choices to deliberately experiment with things, and I'm paying the price for it. We, we just need to get out of this. Caravan arrives tomorrow. I don't really need to feed any of you guys. Be gone! So I could, it's the, essentially, I could take advantage of this and not throw anything in the fire. But I still have, to, the, the issue is I still have to feed the fire that much anyways. It's, it doesn't consume at a less rate. So we'll just go ahead and throw in all our wood because we, there's only so much we can carry. So I need to find some beavers in this next one, in this next caravan. Bran, I didn't fail the request. You failed the request. You were way too picky, dude. Or is it Brian? Maybe it's Brian, not Brienne. All right, so we've lost all our travelers again. I kind of like that. I mean, because there's a specific night where I don't have to feed anybody. We have a beaver here who wants a woodcutter's cabin. I mean, I'm probably not going to build that. More likely, I'm going to build, say, a sawmill instead. Stores food and materials. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. I'm happy. I do have a garden. I could make e someone easily happy. Work with the traveler. And combine those two. Alright, so we've got two beavers. One of them is probably not going to build a woodcutter's cabin. I mean, it's, I guess it really depends on what goes on. That is two victory points. It might be worth it. We'll see what happens on, the, on the, maybe the last night I keep this guy. Okay, so now we have some beavers. We can finally start doing some major woodcutting projects. What did you want again? Did you want to be happy? Was that it? See, one wanted to be happy, I think, and one wanted a woodcutter's cabin. So, if I'm going to make happiness, I probably should feed them. Also, I would like to see tomorrow's weather, so I can know maybe it's a veg good veggie day. It'd be a good insect day for all I know. All right, we'll do the feast. It's a good veggie day tomorrow. Get that fire repaired. Yeah, I find not getting any beavers during a caravan deployment pretty hardcore. Sunny, so I get fewer sunflower. Plus five when it's sunny. Okay, so he gets plus five production to wood when it's sunny, or plus five production period when it's sunny. But I get specifically minus five wood production when it's sunny. So that unfortunately just balances out. But we are going to get a let's see forty nine lumber tonight. It's good. Get some veggies. Just 
needed to restock my supplies here. Good, we're doing well. Now that's no longer blowing out our fire. If we have wood available. We've repaired our fire hit points and have the wood to spare to build projects. So we had a little bad spurt there, but we're on the road to recovery. Just like nature intended. Forcing squirrels to get vegetables for you and forcing beavers to chop wood for you. Unfortunately, since we do now know that build build the project has to be done by that person, I couldn't fulfill both objectives by building a single greenhouse. That person has to be the one to do it. I feel it's a waste to get one victory point, but I mean... <laughs> I don't want to send a... I, <laughs> okay, you have four days left to build a woodcutter's cabin. Good. This means that first... And I want... We're going to need to max out on wood at one point. And we're probably going to go over cap again, or we can build a storehouse first. That'll cost us 20. Let's see how much wood we'd get from all this. We have 54 wood from this. So yeah, let's go ahead and let me think here. Tonight, we'll need 10 wood for the fire. That'll drop us down to 29. Yeah, let's go ahead and build the storehouse then. Maybe I should just go ahead and ditch the garden. That's fine for right now. Clifford, I think, wanted to be happy, was it? Maybe it was Clifford. Maybe not. Apparently that's enough to really get him static. There we go. Right, as long as I have 50 wood, I can produce the next tier object. I spent some time with other communities and have seen them making offerings to the sea. We could try. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, other other circumstances, I'd let you do this, but I have a big scale project I want to work on. What I want to find out is I know it says Woodcutter's Cabin, which is this thing right here. I get that. But I want to try the sawmill to see if that counts for the Woodcutter's Cabin. I'm going to assume no, just like I did assume that the garden would not work. I'm going to assume no, but yeah, I have to try just to make sure. You know, I could put it up there if I if I did do the, the gamification thing that someone mentioned earlier. We won't do that. The reason why I think it might work, uh, there's like a 10-15% chance that I think it would work, is because it's really an upgraded version of the woodcutter's cabin. If that's the only function of it, is to get more wood. Get more board wood, or log wood. 
All right, you wanted to be happy, you are happy. We need some insects at this point. Oh, you're a mouse, you're no good at that. So do I want wood or veggies? Probably more wood. We're getting low on that resource. Okay, it does not appear to have counted. That's another thing we've learned on this second pass through the tutorial. The reason I say second pass through the tutorial is you can start without the tutorial and have the whole seven days up to you to do whatever you want. But of course, since I'm recording, I want to show off the tutorial. So we, we have them happy. Everything's good. You just need to be able to build a cabin. So we actually don't really need to feed much of anything. We'll give you this much, so that way... Actually, you know what? Oh yeah, we'll go ahead. I, I, I will end up losing a little bit... That's fine. To get those two victory points, I'm going to need to build a cabin and then clear it down afterwards. I guess I don't have to clear it down, but three wood production facilities is probably a bit much when I don't have enough houses to support them all. So this dude, he wants to produce wood, but he's very bad at it. Come on, man. I don't know what the point of a dormitory is. Like, yes, it houses two travelers. You could also just build housing twice. It's not, if it's saved tiles, that'd be one thing, but it doesn't, it costs two tiles still. <sighs> that being said, I mean, you only had to reinforce it once. But I, th I think that definitely needs a buff or whatever you want to call it. I want some, right. these are not bad. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of this one. Fish for dinner, no. Okay, beaver. Good. I like those. Beavers are my favorite unit here. Probably could use another insect guy, but BB wants to work with another traveler, which is unlikely to happen in insect my insectarium thingy. I guess I don't have much of a choice on that one. Because I'm running low on. Oh, you have a choice between... Ah, you know what? Let's forget it. What... I mean, yes, I don't. I, I'm going to run out of insects, but that's only for one day. I can just have one of my squirrels do insects for one day as well. At 22 out of 25, so I'm about to complete the game anyways. And while I kind of want to not beat the game, it is fun. Uh, for recording purposes, I should conclude it. <laughs> I found this out while clearing some debris. I can keep it for myself or trade it for something else if you'd like. Okay. Um, sure. What is this? I get five insects. That's fine. That's an okay trade. You need a woodcutter's cabin. You wanted veggies. You wanted to work with someone. You would like to feel better. The dormitory is 80 wood, but it only welcomes two travelers. I don't get it. That's 25 victory points. Feast it up. If you want to see more content like this, such as going back and playing Spirit Fair, continuing coverage of Diluvian Winds when it updates or comes out, show me by hitting that like button. Thank you very much for watching Train Wins, Diluvian Wins, the prologue demo. 
I'll see you next time.